Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course, as usual. Um, today I would like to tell you about a funny notion, which I haven't heard about uh, until I heard about it, <laughs> a tautology, uh, until, until very recently, and that's the dimension of a graph. And that's kind of a little bit strange. You might shout out now, wait, a graph is obviously a one-dimensional object. So what is so interesting of, uh, about this question? Well, maybe we want to redefine dimension a little bit differently. And actually graphs can be, we'll see that, quite high dimensional. Uh, so let's motivate the question. And uh, qu it's quite, quite a reason. Well, graph theory is quite recent in general. And this one is maybe 50 years old-ish. Um, we'll see. So graphs are certainly abstract objects. It's simply a collection of vertices and edges. We just like to draw them all the time. But strictly speaking, it's just a collection of vertices and edges. And whatever you see here, they are clearly the same graph. Maybe not clearly, but they are the same graph. Uh, so one of them is just a little bit twisted towards the other. Right? So they don't live anywhere. That's my whole point here. They don't have any home. Um, it's just an abstract thing. We just like to think about them as living somewhere. And as soon as we do that, like here, they live in R2, uh, we can ask the question, well, maybe we want some nice realization. So those pictures are called realizations of the same graph, uh, different realizations of the same graph. And we could ask for some nice realization, whatever nice means for now. For example, the right realization is slightly better in the sense that all edges have the same distance. So this edge has the same length as this edge, while clearly this edge is shorter than this edge. So in that sense, the right realization is preferable over the left one. I say it again, the right is preferable, well, in, in this sense, because all edges actually are of the same length. Huh? In the left one, that's obviously not the case. So the uh, red one here is clearly not of the same length as the other red, uh, as the green one, but in the right hand picture, they're both of the same length. And let's kind of justify this kind of slightly strange right hand side here, which looks a little bit strange. But keep in mind that we are completely free to realize our graphs how we want to. And maybe that's what we would like to do that kind of could remind you of some real world problems, but actually the graph represents something in the real world. So it might make sense to attach some numbers to it that are kind of like lengths of, of edges or something. And that's what people had in mind here. Um, probably strictly speaking, what the people had in mind that invented this is just, it's a fun idea, so let's try. But you can definitely think of it as being kind of a real world. Um, type of situation where now the graph represents a real world thing. So you might wonder about some lengths of edges. Okay, so and that's by definition the dimension. So if um, a graph fits nicely, that's just the word I'm using here because I would like to think about nice realizations into some R to the N if we can draw all edges of equal lengths. So here, for example, this one, uh, well, I'm drawing it in the plane, but actually it fits on a line. So it's one dimensional and clearly all edges have the same length. So not very surprising. This one doesn't fit on a line anymore, but it clearly, or well, not clearly, but you could see that it fits into R2 and all edges are of the same length. Uh, so this is of dimension one and this is of dimension two. Why are these of dimension one and two? Because I define the dimension of a graph to be the minimum of all uh, n r to the n where they fit into nicely. And clearly you can't do better than one here. And it's not so hard to see that you can't do better than two here. So the dimensions of those two graphs are actually one and two. And that's pretty interesting already because uh, well now a one dimensional object here can actually have dimension two. So the dimension is really referring not to the graph, although um, that's how we denote it, but it's actually more referring to how we can embed it. So what's uh, the space that we need to embed it having this property that everything is of the same length. And as usual in mathematics, the first question is, can you say anything about this number? Or is this just impossible or is it boring or we don't know, right? Can we say anything about this number? 
And it turns out to be an interesting question and a very non-trivial one, as we will see. So this one here, the tetrahedron graph, is actually of dimension three. It's already not quite trivial to check, but if submental yoga will get you there, and the realization where every edge has the same length is the tetrahedron. So that's a three dimension. That object lives in three dimensions. So actually, um, and we cannot do better. So this really has dimension three. Um, dimension three is already pretty big. So it's kind of the question that comes to mind is, is there kind of a possible maximum value or can the dimension get as crazy as you want? So can graphs be arbitrary dimensional? Maybe, maybe four spaces enough and all uh, could be, right? And all graphs fit nicely into four space, who knows? So is there a maximum possible value for the dimension? Hmm. seems to be unclear and maybe even more important can we somehow bound or say anything about this number using some intrinsic properties of the graph because the graph is an intrinsic object um, like whatever something related to vertices and edges and their connections seem to be natural question that come to my mind here and a priori it's not clear what the answer should be and there are two very nice theorems associated to this. Um, and I will show you what they are. That's actually pretty cool. So it doesn't seem to be trivial if I just think about it already. A not very hard graph with four vertices and the same uh, six edges. Um, I hope that was right. One, two, three, four, five, six edges. It needs three dimensions to be realized, and that's not quite trivial. Um, if you know the trick, if you know that it's just a tetrahedron, it's also not so hard, but it's really not quite trivial if you have to do it yourself. So it's absolutely not clear whether you can get anything uh, about the dimensions. And here comes, comes the main theorems you actually can. First, the bummer, you need arbitrary dimensions, so the dimensions of the complete graph is always n minus 1. So it turns out that this is actually a complete graph. If it's a complete graph K4 on four vertices, complete just means everything is connected to everything. So one, this one needs to be connected to everything. This one needs to be connected to everything. This one needs to be connected to everything. And this, of course, just a tetrahedron graph. And we need a dimension three, which fits. So K4 needs dimension three. K5 needs already dimension four. So it gets a bit tricky to draw. K6 needs dimension five and so on. So <laughs> it gets arbitrary complicated. Okay, that's maybe not super nice, but still we kind of know now that we can't do anything with a bound. Could have been that we can stop in dimension four or something, but no, we can't. We always end up um, with uh, the graphs that are arbitrary high dimension. And then the other one is actually then very impressive. If you keep that in mind, you can bound the maximal dimension by something really just intrinsic and easy to count, namely the max degree of the graph. You just need to add a factor two. So two times the max degree is always an upper bound for the dimension of a graph. It's not a really good one. So this one here, for example, is the, of dimension one. The maximal de degree here uh, is two, for example, this vertex here has degree two. So two times the max degree is four. One is quite smaller than four, but it, that's not the point. The point is this is a bound that works for any graph and is ridiculously simple to check, right? So just count the, the, the max degree. You don't need to think about any embeddings or nice realizations or anything. We just count the max degree. So we answered our two questions in two theorems, which are both not trivial to prove, in particular the second one. Um, and I, I think the max degree bound is pretty cool. The, the first one is kind of expected, otherwise there wouldn't have been the notion of a dimension. Um, but the second one is in particular a really, really cool theorem. In particular, in the light of another theorem about those uh, dimension G, um, so dimension G is one of the problems that is known to be NP hard. In everyday language, that means for a given graph, you can just forget it. You will never find the dimension. So bounds are kind of the best you can do. Um, so NP hard is worse than NP complete. That's what 
this picture here actually is supposed to say. So if you know what NP complete is, that's already a ridiculously complicated class. And NP hard is in some sense even worse. So complexity in this diagram goes in this direction. So everything polynomial uh, is here, and NP hard is just ridiculously complicated. So you can formally prove that trying to solve the dimension G problem for a graph is essentially impossible in general, which makes uh, those two, well, the second statement here, the red one, really, really impressive. Anyway, I would like, what I'd like to show you is this the idea of associating a dimension to a graph, which at first glance sounds a bit strange, like obviously they're one dimensional objects, but it's a more like playing around with an embedding, fiddling around with an embedding, uh, embedding such that all edges are of the same dimension, and you get a highly non-trivial problem, which probably has, or definitely has, many real-world applications, and we would like to really know more about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.